Rub up your engines! Now here's a headline I can't resist laughing at. Ethanol Group slam U.S. EPA advisors for reports on ethanol fuels, minimal climate benefit, right? Okay, so the farmers and the pro-ethanol, the people that are making it say, that's nasty that the EPA advisor says, well, this ethanol has a minimal impact. Well, of course, it does have a minimal. It's actually a negative impact. You can read real scientific studies, right? And they will show you that the use of ethanol is actually a negative input towards greening, not positive, because something like 21% more energy is used creating the ethanol that you ever get back by using it as a fuel in cars. I've seen the figures, and to me, it makes total sense. Corn is grown using fertilizer. Much of the fertilizer is made from petrochemicals. Then they have diesel trucks, diesel tractors, right? And they're farming the corn. Then they're picking the corn. Then diesel trucks take it to the corn silos. Then sometimes they go on trains that are diesel powered, right? Then they have to turn the corn into ethanol, alcohol, which creates all kinds of energy use for that to top it all off, of course. If you use ethanol, ethanol has 20% less energy than gasoline, and you will get at least a 20% worse gas mileage in your car. If you get that much less, 20% worse gas mileage, that factors into it's actually a net loss process of 20-something percent. More energy is put into the system than you get using it. And so, of course, it has a minimal effect on a climate benefit. Actually, it's negative. Like I said, you put more energy in, you're actually using more energy created, and then it's burned anyways, it's still burned in cars, that it's a joke. It's a joke, except the farmers, it's no joke, they're selling corn, they're making money, right? So farmers love it, and other groups love it. But it is a negative climate. If you look at it scientifically, you're actually putting more energy into the system than you ever get out. It's just like people I said to me, you know, you can run your car on water, you can make hydrogen uh, from water and burn your car on that, which of course is true. But there's one problem. The hydrogen and water, H2O, has such a bond to the oxygen, the energy it takes to break that bond is more than the energy you get by burning the hydrogen. So it, too, is a net loss process, right? <laughs> now, unless you get the energy for nothing to split it, it's going to be a net loss process, right? Now, there's guys that make these big towers with shiny mirrors shining the heat, and they're trying to turn water into hydrogen and stuff like that. But even then, it's not free because you got to build the machinery. And they built the machinery out in the desert, and it's all abandoned now because they saw it was an economically viable thing to do. So if you have a negative energy system, it is stupid to perpetuate it. It just is. Of course, the farmers are complaining, and the pro ethanol groups, because they make money making this stuff. Follow the money. AJ for Life says, what would be a great daily driver in Project SUV, an Acura or an Infinity? I'm looking at a 2007-9 Acura MDX for $6,500, or 2006 Infiniti FX $3,500, $40,000 for 7900 Also looking at an 04 Nissan Murano for three grand with 150 Well, one, forget the Murano. Those are Murano vehicles. They're terrible. Don't even think about it. Definitely go for the Acura. The Acura's Honda makes them. They're solid mate. They're good vehicles. The Infinities, they are endless money pits as they age. Now, when they're brand new, they're zippy, fun vehicles to drive. I've had many customers buy them and like them until they got old. Then they got rid of them because the catalytic converters went bad, the transmissions went bad, the engines burned oil, they had electronic problems, their air conditioning compressors blew up. Money pit cars when they get the higher mileage. And that one's got, what, 140K. That's a reasonable amount of mileage. Definitely go for the Acura. Don't even think about getting an Infiniti. They may look good and run good for the time being, but they're money pits. And forget the Nissan Murano. Those are just crap mobiles. Even though it's only three grand, the other ones are seven. $8,600, $6,500. You'd have to buy four or five of them to be the same as one Acura, so stay away from that. Evolve Night Eve says, the shifting the car from low to drive and vice versa damaged the automatic transmission. I got a Honda Civic 2005. I put it in low when I'm in snow and stuff, and then when I get out, I put it in drive, and then if it happens again, I will shift back into low. It's not going to damage anything. That's what the low gear is for, so you don't get stuck in the snow and you're spinning too fast and slide all over the place. Volvo was one of the first companies to have that 
actually built into their transmissions. All they had was a picture of snow. And when you pushed it, that was for driving in snow and ice and kept it in a lower gear. And yeah, that makes total sense. You know, it wouldn't shift way up into the high gear. That makes total sense. Go right ahead and do it. That's what it's there for. That's why they have it there. So you can drive safer in bad conditions, mud, rain, snow, sleet, stuff like that. That's what it's made for. Mark 8958 says, I got fuel spark and compression, but my engine won't run. I got a 1992 Honda Civic. I'm driving it. It lost all power. Power. It turns over, but it won't start. The fuel pump primes. Nothing starts. I tried spraying starting fluid. It doesn't work. Distributor's brand new. ECU's brand new. Fuel pump injectors and filter are new, but it won't run. Hell, let me tell you something. Just yesterday, I worked on a 93 Civic that a guy brought all the way from Idaho. And he got it dirt cheap because it wouldn't start. He bought it at a salvage yard. And those have a particular problem with the main relay. It's hidden away. You got to take the bottom of the dash apart up above your driver's knee. There's a main relay there. I'm sure the Honda dealers still sell them because they had nothing but problems. Take that apart and put that new relay in. 99% of the time that will fix it. Kind of ironic that you ask me this because I just worked on a 93 Civic yesterday. I mean, they're old as the hills, but it was still running perfectly fine. And that's why the guy got it cheap is because that main relay went bad. So get that main relay. It'll probably fix it. I've seen that a zillion times on old things. Back in the day, I changed them all the time because it was a problem that Honda had back in the 90s. And all the good mechanics knew, oh, that's hidden way up in there. Go in there and change it and it'll fix it. Then it would. Monty J says, I have no power to my car. I swapped out a Blendor actuator and now my car's dead. There's power to the truck. Everything worked on the truck before I took the dash apart. It's a 2013 F-150. You broke the cardinal rule of working on dashes in cars. Anybody who wants to look, get a flashlight, look under your dash, crawl your head against the floor panel, look up. You'll see wires, relays, all kinds of crap. Any time you work in a dash on a car, disconnect the battery. Take the cables off. You didn't. You could short out a billion things turning that dash apart. There are so many wires. You could have wiped out the main computer easily, shorted out the PCM, and then it will never start. What you want to pray, somewhere under there, when you took it all apart, you disconnected some connector that isn't connected anymore because something has been shorted out when you were in there. And like I said, the main computer, if you had a live wire and it touched the frame or got jerked around and pray you just unplugged something. If you lose power to the computer or you shut the computer out, the car will never start. So go under there. Pray something's unplugged or look closely. Maybe when you put the dash back on, the plastic pinched the wire and broke the wire. And now you got to just cut that wire off and solder new wiring on there to make it go. Pray it's that easy. But many times I've seen people ruin the main computer. It'll either fry the PCM or the BCM, the body control module. Could have fried either of them. And your car won't start if either one of those is fried. So if you can't see anything, pay a mechanic like me. We can plug in our machines and find where the communication is lost. If it is a computer system, pray that it's the BCM, body control module, and not the PCM, the powertrain control module, because the BCM is much cheaper than the PCM. Pray that's what happened. Well, Tesla's stock is dropping again. It dropped like 25%. The thing is, you know, the problem with the stock market and valuation, there's so many different factors involved. People are shorting Tesla. People are playing the long game. Every time they make some notice, they think if something's great, it goes up, and then they find out it was a lie, it goes back down. But now it's kind of on a downward slide. And one of their models, they reduced the price $44,000. That says something, right? The only reason is dropping the prices because people aren't buying the stupid things. And of course, they are going to find that out in spades when you get the combination of competition of other electric car manufacturers selling electric cars. And if you ask me and many other experts, there probably will be a electric car glass ceiling. When a certain amount are sold, cars will hit the ceiling and that's it. Nobody else wants to buy. I've already seen people that have bought electric cars. 20% of the people in California bought electric cars said they want to get rid of it. They're not going to get another one. It's too inconvenient. I've had customers buy electric cars and they got rid of them. They said it was way too inconvenient if I did any kind of trips. And they said, why should we buy an expensive electric car, drive around in town, and then we got to fly someplace because it's too inconvenient. 
take the electric car far and charging it, what's the point of even having the car in the first place? Especially an expensive car like that. It would be one thing if people had tiny little electric cars, like, you know, little mini electric cars, driving around the city, a little areas, and then fly and rent a car when you go someplace else, right? Okay, now you want to do that? Sure. But selling expensive cars like Tesla, and then they have a very limited usage, doesn't make any sense at all. If you want to make it small and cheap, sure, then people can zoom around town and then use something else when they go. But buying an expensive electric car, you're like, did I just waste sixty, eighty, ninety thousand dollars on a car I can't take all over the place? No, it's stupid, right? So pretty soon I think we're going to hit a glass ceiling of electric cars. And the fact that Tesla stock is going down, that they're lowering the price on their cars, tells you they can't sell the things. And American car dealers are telling their manufacturers, please don't send us any more electric cars until we sell the ones we have because people aren't buying them. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.